Action item number five. Um, this is the uh, uh, review of lesser program inventory to include um, which items the town would like to keep and possibly sell, as well as the process for selling acquired uh, items from the lesser program. Uh, <coughs> long ago, when the town when I when our town manager first took this job, he and, and I discussed the lesson program at length. And his immediate reaction back then was to get rid of it all, begin again, and do it right. I don't know if that was your exact word, but it was pretty darn close. Um, at the time, I didn't completely agree because there were a few pieces of equipment that I thought were useful. Commissioner Persinger, long ago, asked that uh, we determine what we would like to keep and that we make a plan to dispose of the rest. Um, since then, I've learned a lot. The town of Del Mar has found a way to work together to make the program work for them in many different levels. Um, legal and proper sale of free military surplus equipment obtained through the program has been a powerful tool for the town of Del Mar and many other towns in Delaware and across the nation. However, in Delaware, or in Delaware, in Dewey Beach, things were done poorly. In 2017, the commissioners tried to wrap their arms around this issue. Commissioner Persinger again led the way with smart and thoughtful leadership, but we need a manager. Just over a year ago, we hired Scott Koenig to be that manager. In the years since Mr. Koenig has started working with the town, we have made great progress, despite an angry minority that finds fault in all that we've done. I still find it odd that in the ranks of the angry minority are people that served the town over a decade ago that were when these things were done poorly. Um, at, and they don't seem to accept any responsibility, but they're willing to take shots at us. Others that serve now um, and today understand that we have been involved in this program for many years. Uh, the truth is, <coughs> the truth is clear. More should have been done in March and April and May of 2016, but it was not. Each day that we do our jobs well, we begin to regain the public trust. To that end, I agree with Mr. Koenig's original thoughts on this from last year. We need to get back to zero. It took more than a decade to get where we are with all of this stuff. We need to get this done, and I understand that perhaps there will be a few items that we should keep, but I would like to sell what we can, scrap the metal that we can, and throw the rest away. This. In this, I am including all the equipment that was um, acquired, that is uh, currently at uh, uh, shooting ranges. Um, uh, it, it, let's get to zero so that we can begin again and build the town that the voters and the stakeholders of our town can trust. With that, I'll open it up for discussion. Commissioner Bauer. Commissioner Bauer. All right. One we need to define what, how we're going to get rid of it because the criticism is going to come. <laughs> Go ahead. If we sell something for a million dollars, somebody's going to say, we could have got 1.1 million. How do you know? What are we determining is, is how do we make this crystal clear to the public that it's sold, it is competitively sold, and we bid them out, and we're going back to what we're talking about in the chart. Are we bidding these things out? Are we doing an auction on it? Uh, we have vendors come to town to buy it. Uh, you know, we need to define, uh, you know, the dot the eyes across the T's of how we're going to do it in an open way. <coughs> we don't have the criticism. Uh, it, 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 you know, we, we all know that's going to happen. I mean, if we sold something for a thousand. Somebody's going to say that we could have gotten more than a thousand. I mean, they should have been more than a thousand, right? What's interesting about the role we have is that 49.7% uh, of the people. Will disagree no matter what. So I don't I don't fear that um, conversation. Mr. Cook has a comment and then we'll agree there. Mr. Mayor, unless I'm so differently, I would probably agree with 99% of what you said. Uh, I think though we need to make a decision what we're going to do. We never have finally said, I don't think, and Commissioner Persinger might prove me wrong on this because I can't remember the various different uh, uh, motions that we passed, but we never have decided actually what to do. You know, we said we need lists, we need this, we need recommendations. You know, it would be my thought that, that we would just sell as much as possible mm -hmm. that the town manager recommends to sell and with a report to the commissioners 
But uh, we have to look at <coughs> that first before we talk about how we're going to sell. I think I, yeah. I, and it's his thought, but uh, I think I can help with that because he was pretty clear. So I'll go right there. Yeah, I don't know. Did, did you have comments that you wanted to make? Uh, I'll make mine after you. I thought you were going to ask questions. Well, <laughs> then actually, I'd, I'd rather hear your comments okay. first because it, it may. It, it may change what I was saying. <laughs> so, so again, there are two separate spreadsheets that were posted as supplemental documents. And the, the chief and I have been going through some items very methodically. The items that have to go back to the government. So there were some cameras, uh, there were some weapons that we have, and we have been methodically sending them back to the government. And it's, it's, it's one item at a time so that we can track all the way through the paperwork because we have to send it, they have to receive it, they have to acknowledge it, and then we update the spreadsheet. So we're going through very methodically and, and um, essentially returning stuff. And we're down roughly from 2,634 items to 2,187 items with the initial purchase value currently tracking at about $3.1 million. And um, as we return something and we get some of the original documentation for it, the numbers change slightly. So what we may have had on here for, for a site of uh, $350, when we return it, it may have actually been a $383 item. So we update the numbers and we try to track it all the way through this community. Originally, uh, when I posted the, the March 6th inventory, uh, I identified a handful of items that I said keep this item. And uh, the commission person would ask for some <coughs> clarification on those things. And uh, the more I think about this stuff and the, how toxic this program has been and how divisive it has been, um, ultimately my recommendation is until we get rid of every piece of this equipment, we get down to only a couple pieces of equipment where are going to have to live with the toxic environment associated with this program. And, and I go back to the, the question that I've been asking myself since early March has been, if we had to buy any of this stuff with our dollars, would we have bought it? And my answer is, I don't think we would have bought any of it. So ultimately, I think we need to methodically discharge the entire inventory down to zero. And I think the easiest way to do that is there are items that are just considered disposable and we're starting to work through some of those disposable items. But there are other large items. Uh, we had talked potentially about having a, an auction at the lot. My concern about that is, is that we don't own the lot and we'd have to invite people to the lot and that can create a major problem for, for me administratively and for us just operationally and legally. The state um, uses a website, I think it is, um, I think it's actually called Government Bids or something, Government Deals, uh, where they sold a number of, of boats from the Indian River Inland. They, they upload stuff to the website. There's a fee that you pay per item, but it's completely hands off. We upload the information, we, we describe it, we put pictures in there, and it goes out all across the nation. So if somebody in California wants to buy sight unseen, this piece of equipment, they send the cashier's check, and they send however they're going to transport it, and it gets loaded and, and transferred to them. That gives you the most exposure, it's the least hands off for us, I think it's the, in my mind at least, it's the easiest way to say that was the market value of it. If I had a local auction of this stuff, I'm likely only to get local buyers, and while that that's possible, we, maybe we should do that, I would like to offer a number of this equipment on, on these uh, large distribution websites first and see if we get takers from that, from that methodology. And then I don't have objections to having a local auction. I just think we have to really think about where we do it, how we do it, you know, what's the goal of it. My reluctance in selling this stuff is I go back to um, this stuff was acquired 
for resiliency and response <coughs> to disasters, whether they're natural disasters, man-made disasters, but that was the purpose of this, this release program. The government didn't need this equipment anymore. It was deemed surplus. It was deemed uh, used beyond their, their need. Useful life. Or, or useful life. So the government uh, developed a pathway to get it to those levels <coughs> that could potentially utilize it for their operations. I don't like to think of this program as a windfall because I don't think that that was the initial intent of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really reluctant <coughs> to say, I want to sell all this stuff and make a lot of money off of it. I want to get rid of it and get a reasonable price for it. But the sooner I think that we discharge these items, and I don't mean rush to do it, I mean methodically do it. Um, and, and so we only own a few pieces of property. We own a very small warehouse site in West Rehoboth, and we own Town Hall. I guess we, we lease the life safety station land, I think. Six times um, and we, we own uh, the area where Town Hall and the Annex are. So we don't have a lot of storage area. If we had a large storage area for this stuff, uh, I would feel differently because we could go out, we could touch it, we could exercise the, the engines and stuff like that on a regular basis. But we don't have the manpower to manage all of these items, especially when they're not in one central location. And we're also fighting the, the element of time and the weather because this stuff is, some of it was new when we got it, but it's because it was a surplus. A lot of it's not new, a lot of it's older, and it's, 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 it's rusting every day by sitting where it's sitting. So, you know, I, I have various feelings on this program, but I think we got into the program with good intentions. We got away from us, and the easiest way to regain the public confidence in all of this stuff is to, is to get rid of all of the equipment and then if we decide at some point we need something else, then we go back through the approved process. With that being said, we, we are still in the program, and, and we still do monitor some of this stuff. And uh, for example, uh, there is potential to get ammo off of this program for training purposes. Right. And it is only for <coughs> that it not be used for regular service weapon use. It is only for uh, qualification training. So uh, we are still in the queue for that. If that stuff actually becomes available to us, we're going to take our turn in the program, and uh, we would have to take possession of it. We would have to manage it. We would have to report on it. But uh, this program has become so toxic and such a distraction <clears throat> that I think it's doing a disservice to our staff that, that uh, comes to work every day to do the regular jobs. It becomes a, a very large distraction for uh, people who want to criticize stuff. And, and you go back to, how do you know you're going to get the highest and best price? And the answer is, we do not know that for certain. But we know if we transfer it, then we discharge it. We no longer have any responsibility for it. And if I have a process that, that I can show the commissioners, if we got $50 for this, we put it on the website, and uh, it was open for a week, and that's all we got, then I think that's the best I can do, and I think that, that meets the public scrutiny test, so. I think you were, Dale. No, Eric, Eric, for me. Go right ahead. Okay, okay. I, I, I appreciate your comments, and, and I'm glad that I asked you to go first. Because <laughs> I, I can, I can uh, modify some of what I want to say. Just by way of history, go back to November, November 2017. That's when we were kind of in the dark about the program in many respects, and we asked for a full inventory. Uh, it took until March of the following year for us to begin to get that inventory, and I think it was April 14th of 2018, we actually had a complete spreadsheet that we were able to put together. It didn't have all the data elements that we, we asked for, uh, we asked for both the justification that was given to the lesson program for acquiring the equipment, as well as the actual use. We got nothing on actual use. Uh, the only thing that we got was the, what was given to the, to the program, and that was given to us on paper. We had to actually assemble that into a spreadsheet. Um, so uh, then moving forward then, uh, August 10th, 2018, uh, we unanimously passed a motion. And part of that motion said, 
Within the next five months, the town manager shall work with the police department to identify items that are required through the law enforcement support office and are now owned by the town for which there are specific identifiable and demonstrable needs. The inventory of items included as a supporting document for the April 14, 2018 commissioner's meeting shall serve as the basis for this determination. The list of these items and their use shall be provided to the commissioners. So when I saw this, the spreadsheet on, uh, I guess it was probably March the 6th, and, and even on the working copy of March 26th, I was really unhappy to see that we had a list of items that were going to be kept, but we had absolutely no idea how they were going to be used. Someone had never told us. Um, it, it struck me as, as foot dragging. Um, I'm not sure how else to, uh, to describe it, but it was, it was disturbing. Uh, there were, and additionally, there are, uh, I believe I, I said there were, there were seven, six actually, that were designated as, as key items. Uh, there were actually seven, I missed one when I was counting. There were six as, as being considered for selling, and then there were four additional items, one of which was at the Selby Bill uh, firing range and three at the Bridgeville firing range. Um, I could not imagine how, after eight months, there could be any doubt about what was going to be sold and what wouldn't be sold. That, again, bothered me tremendously. Um, why, there were quite, why there was equipment at Selby Bill and, and Bridgeville, particularly three tractors at the Bridgeville range, I have no idea. And when we originally found out about this in April of 2018. The explanation was that um, they do use two, two ranges, and for at least one of the ranges, maintenance is a shared responsibility among municipalities using the range. Uh, I, I found that explanation curious. Um, I didn't seek any additional detail at that time. But uh, on the 12th of, uh, of March of this year, I then sent the email to uh, the town manager and asked a series of questions. Is there a need for any tractor to satisfy whatever maintenance needs are created by the police department's use of the ranges? And I will admit, first of all, I've never been to a fire range, so I'm not sure what maintenance, what type of maintenance is, is necessary. Uh, is there a need for three tractors at one range? Who is operating these tractors? What's the police department's arrangement regarding the use of these ranges? Are these ranges owned privately or by a law enforcement agency? If privately owned, why would the police department have maintenance responsibility? Does Doing Beach have any ownership interest in these ranges? Are the tractors being used to cover the cost of the use of these ranges? Does the police department plan to give up ownership of this equipment? Um, I don't have answers to any of those questions. <coughs> and I, I think it's reasonable to ask, uh, it's, and it's reasonable to ask for a response to those questions. Um, I, I will modify my position somewhat on this, given the fact that the town manager has now seems to be taking a position that we should just dispose of all of this equipment. I necessarily don't have a problem with that. Uh, and if we're going to do that, it needs to be done in a very orderly way. Again, my suggestion all along has been, let's start at the top with those items that um, have the, uh, the highest value, at least in terms of the acquisition value that the military assigns to it, and just move down the list and do this in a very orderly way. Get the best price that you can, or, or at least use the most reasonable method possible if that's a national uh, effort or if that's a local auction, I think either either process could be fine. Uh, it needs to be well documented. It needs to be with as much sunlight as possible. Uh, but that's what I think we need to, to, to do to move forward. I again would like to put a time frame on this. Um, we're already uh, at the end of the time frame that we originally set in August for disposing of all the equipment. And um, I think I it was begin, right? You know, we were supposed to have everything done by by the uh, by eight months. The original and sold, yeah. disposed of and sold. That's right. That was that was the motion that we yeah. all unanimously passed. Yeah. Um, I would like to set another time frame of, of about three months, another three months, to have this process completed, um, get rid of all this equipment. If there really is something that uh, that the town would like to keep, I don't have an objection to that. But tell us specifically how you're going to use it. Well, and I'm going to step in, and I'm sure you will want to as well, is I, I, I was here for all of that, um, and I understand what the goals you were trying to make, and I felt that I communicated some of this information <coughs> at that time, and as we move forward, um, but Scott was always very clear that zero was his number, 
and that he, he had no desire to keep any of it, uh, uh, but that he wanted to work with staff and, and, and to find out if there was anything he needed to keep. In the meantime, um, and, and my point is, we've had, eight, we've had eight months to do that. It's, it's time. Let's, let's fish your I, I'm, you know, I'm, as you can tell from my mid notes that I just gave a moment ago, um, Independence Day is a lovely day to get to zero. Um, and, and I know that might be an unrealistic goal, but uh, I'm, 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 all, I'm with you. I would love to have this done in an orderly fashion and quickly. Um, and I, um, I'm not trying to assign blame whatsoever because I, I, I've watched as we've taken the steps we need to take, and, and this doesn't happen overnight. Um, Commissioner Bauer. Is there staff needed to upload these pictures onto whatever? So I, I can take the pictures of them. I'm not asking for any additional staff, no. I mean, is this going to be almost exclusively your time? No, it's going to be the, the police department staff at the time. So we're not asking for any more staff. And, and again, so if you'll give me a minute to answer some of these questions. Some, of these, some of these labeling on this, on the spreadsheet is inconsistent with what you actually see when you go out there. So. Um, What's labeled as a tractor varies. There are lawn tractors that are labeled as tractors. There are tractor tractors that are labeled as tractors. There are, um, in one case, there's a, a disc that you essentially use for a grading blade that is listed as a tractor. So some of the some of the annotation in the spreadsheet is very very misleading. And so you actually go and inspect that piece of equipment. And I didn't change the original annotation. I've, I've kind of footnoted it, similar to what we said about the budget, if you go into the notes. <laughs> so, <I'm> sorry. Um, <coughs> but, you know, I, there was a point in time where I was hopeful that I could get it to a point where I was comfortable keeping any of this stuff. And so the only piece of equipment that uh, on this list that I see on a regular basis that I can point out is the Humvee that sits across from from the uh, from town hall. I know it works. I know we drive it. We move it around every now and then. Um, so that would be one of the last items that I would release. But I have to tell you, if we get to July and Humvees have been hot and somebody wants it, I would be more than happy to release it and just to, to again, get away from the entire stigmatism of this program. Here. And, and there's the, the, the stuff that I listed as potentially key or key this item was stuff that in my head could fit on property that we own. And that if we were going to consider keeping something, that's the stuff that we should consider keeping. But as we've, as we've progressed at, at talking about some of this stuff, and uh, my fear is, is that we have it and then we go to get it and we can't use it. You know, it's either infeasible for us to get it to the site where we're trying to get it to, or we get it there and it doesn't work. Or we get it there, we start it and it works for 10 minutes and then it stops working. So the, the, the technical ability for us to respond with this stuff, especially the equipment that I'm, the equipment is what I'm really referring to. There's probably, if you, if you wiped out the first 50 or so items on this list, you probably wipe out 2.6 million of the 3 million that's left. So there, there are a lot of items on here. And, and uh, I had proposed to Commissioner Persinger a while ago to kind of wipe out the stuff that I considered disposable or, or uh, de minimis. And he raised concerns about how do, how do we justify that and how do we publicly communicate that. And what that did was it, it took, it, it kind of inverted everything. It took us down to, I don't remember the number, four or five hundred items, maybe with a million dollars about, or, or two million dollars about, two and a half million dollars. To me, it was logical, but as a commissioner, he felt it wasn't something that he could effectively communicate. And that's where I have to, I have to be able to communicate everything that I do on this, on this spreadsheet. So. Uh, I don't know how long once we start uploading this stuff, <coughs> to come back to the commissioners and report how quickly this stuff is going to go. Some of it may go quickly, some of it may, my fear is, is that some of it won't go at all. 
right. and then we'll be in the, in the position where we're just going to have to take scrap metal right. or dump. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's one of the so here's a scenario. So the very first item is shown here 246,000. That was the original purchase. Price. Right. So that goes to auction. And let's just say someone, no one's really interested in it, and someone offers us 50 bucks for it. So to meet the timelines to sell it, we should accept the $50 and move on. Or we, if we, we think that's a, how, what, how we determine the, you know, we, if we, we can't micromanage Let's say we use the, the, we use the yeah. online auction, mm -hmm. and somebody's willing to pay $50 for it and come get it and transport it to wherever they want. Assuming that the auction period went and we clocked through and there was only one or two bids or whatever, but there was a real bid and they sent a check for $50 that was a cashier's check, they own it. Uh, I mean, that, right. that, my feeling is that, that they, it is what it is at that point. I, I can't, if we had, if we had a site auction and, and somebody, um, you know, the bidding started at 50 bucks and one person raised their hand and that was the end and it closed out. It's no different. There are people who are looking for bargains, no question. So. Well, on the site auction, not only the liability issues, and I'll jump right in, you was next and I'll come right over there, um, is you're also, you worry about our small town world that we live in. And would the site auction lead us to friends and family that come to the auction that say, I have <coughs> this piece or that piece, and suddenly something sells ridiculously cheaply. Where on the online auction, they have to compete about against everybody in the world. So I, I really appreciate what he's, right. I almost got a commissioner. We're going to be comfortable with what we get is what we get. It, I, I think we need to be, and I think we it's critically important that we as commissioners don't micromanage that process. Because otherwise we're never going to sell all this stuff. So that's why I'm questioning it. I'll take a very aggressive approach and I think sell it, scrap it, trash it. That's, our, that's the mantra that I think, and, and get to zero. Um, I, except for the Humvee, because I like that Humvee too. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm just saying that out loud. Um, Commissioner Cook. Uh, well, I plan on no, talking over there. I plan on discussing at the end of the conversation because. Commissioner Collins? No, at the end of this conversation. <laughs> oh, okay. But, but, number <coughs> one, I think we as politicians, even though we're small town politicians, we as politicians <laughs> tend to. Yeah, tend to <laughs> We are a small town, and we are a politician. Okay, okay. <laughs> we tend to use words that we shouldn't. And, and I do it as much as the rest of you. <laughs> but to hear foot dragging without a preface to it, and to hear uh, toxic, uh, to hear some terms that we used earlier when you made your statement about, about people that disagree, um, yeah. I, I think we need to be careful. The police, uh, before I would say it also that people are not going to enjoy what I say because I'm not 100% on this side or 100% on that side. I think you have to take a look at it uh, overall. And the police in the beginning did us a great favor, did this town an absolute great favor and got involved in this program. I've been involved in this program on an advisory capacity at times talking to the chief, the present chief, on, and I've made comments to the previous chief, and I ran, helped run a program like this in the Boys Club, because the Boys Club, I've told you before, gets in this program before even municipalities do, they're considered an educational institution. The problem, the, the program is not toxic, that was said earlier. No. The program is toxic. The process became a problem. The program, we should stay in <coughs> and take full advantage of it because the police were right. This helped the town. The problem is there was no oversight or lack of oversight as things drew out over many years. I'm sure if you would ask any of the police chiefs that were involved in this, they felt they were doing what was right for the town at the time. And little by little, town managers and mayors, including myself, failed to keep an eye on the program. We, we failed in our duty to keep an eye on the program. Mm -hmm. And the police, 
process got more and more loose, if we want to call it that, mm -hmm. because they were winging it, trying to do what they thought was best. That doesn't make them right, and it certainly wasn't right for us to allow the program to get as loose as it got. But we have to be careful what terms we use. And, you know, it, it, there was foot dragging. I don't think it was deliberate. I think it was, I don't think it was deliberate at all. I think they just feel that they're overwhelmed, they're going to do their present job and they'll get to this as they get to it. You know, whoever they are, whether it be the town manager, whether it be the chief of police or whoever. But the process has gone on way too long. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't justify eight months and, and we're still where we are. I, I think it needs to, I think we need to move on. I would never be one to say, get rid of it all, but at this stage I'm ready to say, get rid of it all. And get, the, get what you can get. And if there's something that's so obvious that they should keep it, they better have it. A really valid reason to keep almost it. Almost a damn good reason. Yeah, I almost. Have you know, <laughs> um, I just think it, it's nothing 100% one way or the other. I just think we we need to understand that and and not lay blame or anything else. Just let's move on with this program and let's stay in this program. Let's not throw out the as the saying goes, baby with a bath water. So that's it. One more comment, we're going to move on, unless there's... Well, I never even spoke of this, mm -hmm. if you wish to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm for this program, if it's done responsibly. I worked with Commissioner Persinger to create at least a policy that we can live with, and the town does get use out of it. Uh, so I wouldn't want to return everything. For instance, there's a shop back, you probably passed by, and they got out of the lease program, I believe, and they use it. So, to clean their cars, something like that is useful, there's a need. So if there's a legitimate need, we should keep it. If not, get rid of it. And I would assume there'd be a large quantity we will be getting rid of. Uh, there's some unexplained questions, like the town spent 4000 this year moving stuff, the coastal towing bartering for hundreds of thousands. But getting to uh, Commissioner Persinger when he said the firing range, I also had questions, does the town have insurance on those vehicles? Who touches those vehicles? Is it Dewey Beach Police or the firing range staff? And I've been to firing ranges, I've qualified on the firing ranges, I've never had to bring a tractor in order to use a firing range. Uh, but get, getting back to the selling everything with three months, I would totally agree with that. And I think you could do the best of both worlds. You sell it online, but you also advertise that link on the town of Dewey Beach website, Kate Gazette state of Delaware and maybe a Washington DC or Philly newspaper and send it to all the local police departments. There's an advantage of if you're local you don't pay shipping and it's easier to move the equipment. So if you do the online with just getting the word out locally you get the best of both worlds and I, I believe three month is a great time frame to just do it, just get rid of the stuff you have no <coughs> need for starting and especially including the shooting range equipment, which is stored on private shooting ranges, that needs to go because that's a liability to the town. Okay. One more. One more. I, I, we've, we've had questions all along about um, uh, we get, the town gets this equipment, what are they using it for? And that's still an open question. You know, we, we set up a time frame of five months to get a specific list of items that are going to be kept. And, and then to include that with that, what are we going to do with it? And, and I'm still okay with that. You know, if, it, if the town wants to provide us with that, if there are some items that are particularly useful, if the town wants to keep you know, tell us about that and tell us what we can use it for. And that, that's what has never happened. And, you know, I just, I can't think of any excuse. I, I, I can't think of the, the, the police department or any of the other staff being so overwhelmed that within eight months, uh, they give us a list of, of seven items that are going to be kept and they don't tell us what they're going to do with them. Okay. And still have six that they're considered seven. Um, I still would like to have the questions resolved about the, the firing ranges. Uh, the, two of the highest value assets are sitting at those ranges. Um, you know, I'd like to know why they're there, what we're doing with them, and you know, if we're going to get rid of them, what's the process for doing so? Well, as as we, in as that we, conversation, well, let me, let me just okay. as we move forward, as we dispose of these things. I, I know it's going to be a question of do we get the right value for it, but I think we make this as open a process as possible. 
the, you know, uh, position of value is the first item on here, uh, which is the highest acquisition value on the list, and it's already designated as to be scrapped. So if there isn't a buyer out there for it, and you know, we have that information, keep a record of that information in the company with a picture, and you can clearly see a scrap of, of rusty metal, I, I think that's going to be justification enough uh, for whatever value we're able to get in that piece of equipment. So, you know, as open as possible, as well documented as possible, but you know, let's let's get going. Let's get this out of the way. I have to ask a direct question though. If we're going to sell the tractors that are at the shooting range, do we really need the answers to all those questions? Um, I don't know. We we might. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I, I don't understand the work necessary to get I, this done. It's well, like I don't know what the you said the same done. statement a couple times about the number of months that it's taken to get to where we are today, and and I, I, I have nothing but respect for the work that's gone into where we how we've got to today. Um, <coughs> but I think it's time to get off the pot. I didn't use the first part. Just so you know, clearly, I didn't use the first part of that statement. I think it's time I to move. Me. I, I used fish to cut bait. Okay. I think it's, it, well, the, I think my opinion is that uh, I, have, I appreciate and, and have nothing but respect for all the work you've done to help us to get to where we are today. And I've said it several times in my statement that I made. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your hard work. We didn't have a manager for a year in that process. We've got a manager now. Things are getting <coughs> better. It's time to get this done. And I love the Independence Day theme of being done. Um, I don't know if it's even humanly possible, based on what I've already seen and how hard it's been to get to where we are right now. Yeah, we'll but but, but the, my, I, and I don't want to have this be another hour-long conversation of nothing that we're even going to vote on today. So I think what we've discussed, it's been a great conversation once more. I think you've got the feeling of the commissioners. Um, you know, we've had lots of comments from the public in the past about this. Um, but I have to ask Commissioner Person here, if, if the only piece of equipment that or, I don't want to keep calling Commissioner Cunningham, and I know that was insulting. <laughs> I don't mean to do that to you. Um, but uh, if, if the only piece of equipment that he's told us that he has a, any desire to keep is the Humvee, do we really need to go into explanation? I can I can answer many of those questions about why the things are at the, uh, <coughs> at the firing range. But do we do also need answers to all the questions, or are we selling it? Which is it, or is it both? Well, I, I'm assuming we're going to sell it, so that means we need to pull it back in some way or, or you know, celebrate where it's I, I think it's a combination of I need to answer the questions, and the full answer may be we're using it for this, but we're selling it. Um, okay. But, and I don't have any objection to answering those questions. But does, does but, that have any implication on our um, whether we sell it or not? Yeah, I mean, if we're. So, so I, I don't think you should let me Let me answer. Five more kind of high level stuff. If we're not, if if we were contributing equipment as <coughs> part of a quote unquote fee to use the property for for that, if we pull back the equipment, then we just may have to pay fifteen hundred dollars or two thousand dollars a year to use the property if if that's what the, the cost is. So that that's the risk there, and and I have to say, like I said, initially, I thought it was a good idea just to leave the equipment there. But the more I think about it, the more I just send them a thousand dollar check, then they have to worry about a where is it, who drove it, what's my liability for it, what what shape is it in, what happens if it stops work. I mean, there's there's a, I can come up with fifty questions that I can't answer myself, and so that's why in the end, I'm I'm okay getting rid of every stitch of this equipment, and if I need a dump truck, I'm going to call, I'm going to go on the phone book, and I'm going to call whoever's the first dump truck driving company, I'm going to call them to come bring me a dump truck. Or I'm going to go down to Georgia Lynch and say, hey, can you bring a dump truck down the street? Well, and, and if, you, if you're working from top to bottom, and it's top in terms of the most highest value, at least in terms of acquisition value, um, you're going to quickly get to the yeah, point where you're going to get to those disposable yeah. items. Yeah. And I was reluctant to, to let that, put those things aside, so, because in, in previous auctions, previous equipment that has been sold from this program, They've had you know things less than ten dollars that they've reported as being sold. Yeah. So there may be some value in, even in some of that. And some of it may truly be trash. And so take a picture of it and <coughs> trash it. Um, but let's do this in an orderly and, and again in as open a way as possible. Yeah, I, I think yeah. the, the easiest way for us to do this is to to explore the online options, get the things out there and see how it goes. And if that's not working, I have to come up with plenty. I'm going to have a question for the oh, question. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. 
So we're going to bring in revenue. <laughs> what are we going to do with it? General fund, police restricted account, where's it going to go? Build the town hall. Commissioner Cook. This program started and continued throughout the entire operation as the funds would go into police restricted funds, and I would quickly vote for that if it came up to a vote. So. I would like to have that conversation once we get I just brought up for discussion. Uh, not today. today. Not today. Not today. We have think about it. We're seeing 13 items on the agenda. agenda. I appreciate you. Know, we have to be responsible, and that's the next step. But first, we have to have money to figure out what we're putting. 